guys, welcome to this week's Healthy Doggy. I'm Kim Pachati, and of course you all know Dr. Kaz. He is our mascot of our show. You can give me a high five. All right, good job. All right, you sit down and I'm gonna to talk to them, all right? Thanksgiving's almost here. The most traveled day of the year, they say. Um, busiest days at the airports. So we wanted to talk a little bit today about traveling with your dog. We also figured what we would do the next couple of weeks going into Thanksgiving is take a specific item that everybody always has. Today it's green bean casserole. Make it up a little bit healthier. Make it so it's where it's shareable with the dogs. And remember, what we're doing isn't replacing the dog's meals. We all know that everybody kind of likes to give the dog some stuff from the table, especially at the holidays. We want them included, we want them a part of it. So why not make it so it's healthy for you and healthy for them? And that's our ultimate goal, is just to basically raise awareness. Hi, you knocked your hat off. Raise awareness of how easy it is to cook healthy. You know, we do these recipes, we don't use salt, uh, we use other items to flavor, and we're gonna kinda, kinda step through that. But back to the travel a minute. Um, we wanna talk about that. One thing I want you to make sure of that you always have when you're taking your dog out, whether it be traveling to down the corner or anywhere, is make sure you have that dog tag with the dog's name and the dog's phone number. God forbid you were to get in a car accident and the dog would bolt. Asha had a client that that happened to. Um, her dad was driving her dog and he had a heart attack driving in the car. The dog was there, the fire, you know, the rescue squad and everything came and it was just him and the dog. Well, they opened the door and the dog ran. And thank God they found the dog, but it's one of those where you never know what could happen. And always be prepared, always have your dog microchipped. Uh, make sure that you register that microchip. We had somebody who lost their dog that was one of our dogs and they hadn't registered the microchip. Luckily, when we did it, they were all registered in our name, so we got the call um, and that dog was found as well. So it's very, very crucial that you always think ahead. And you know, a lot of times we put those things on the back burner, but don't. Don't, 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 because it really can make a difference. But we're gonna get started real quickly here because um, this is gonna take a little bit to cook and saute, so we're gonna give you a couple breaks through this. And what we're gonna do is we're actually going to saute up our first level of flavors, which is going to be celery and some parsnip. And we're gonna use a little bit of olive oil to just kind of toss into our pan. And what we're doing is we're going to make kind of like a mushroom sauce in a way. Um, getting rid of that canned cream of mushroom troop that everybody uses, which my daughter just told me this morning that she heard on the radio yesterday that I guess the lady who invented the recipe of the green bean casserole ended up passing away. They had worked for Campbell's. So it's kind of like ironic that all this is kind of going, but we're gonna give a healthy new version and, uh, and hopefully you'll like our version as well and can maybe in, and put it into your family as they did the Campbell's soup. So we've got our little bit of olive oil. Like I said, we're kind of coating the bottom of there. My hot plate is steaming up. We're gonna add into our celery. Now celery is something that adds a lot of flavor. Uh, they call it mirepoix. And when you do uh, onion, carrot, and celery. And that really is the base of a lot of soups. Everything kind of starts from there, whether it be a soup or a chili or whichever, you always put that in, because that ends, ends, is like the stability of your meal. Uh, we're also gonna be adding parsnip. So we have probably, let's say maybe about a third of a cup of parsley. We probably have about a half a cup of parsnips. We're just gonna put that in as well. And I'm gonna give that a little stir. Get the stir going here. Get that kind of going. And what we want to do is we want to do that, obviously saute that down a little bit until it's soft and translucent. The next thing we're going to add is our superpower, um, which is shiitake mushrooms. And shiitake mushrooms are a very medicinal property. I mean, for 6,000 years they've been using this. Uh, it's crazy all the different things that this has. It's got like 50 different enzymes. One um, enzyme in particular, which I don't know the name offhand, I had it written down, but I can't remember right now. Uh, it actually helps number one with cancer, but it also boosts the immune system for viral diseases. So shiitake mushrooms is really one that should be a go-to mushroom for not only for your dog, but for you as well. But what we're going to actually do with our mushrooms prior to placing them in there is because we want to pull, we don't want to have all this moisture because that's a lot of problem I see with the green bean casserole. 
Um, I know that, you know, different people have made it and they put it in and it's like soupy or soggy. You know, they tell you to add this milk and add all this kind of stuff. We're not going to do that today. We're just going to get all our whole stuff and be really, really great with it. But we're, the sauce that we're making with our, with our mushrooms, we're going to use a little bit of low sodium chicken broth, but we need to thicken it some way. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take just a little bit of rice flour and we're going to coat our mushrooms because I want, I could very easily go ahead and add the broth into this right now, but what would happen, it would become soupy. It wouldn't thicken up as well. So what you do in order to thicken things is you add flour to fat. Our fat is in the, this recipe is our olive oil. So we're going to add a little bit of the flour and all we're going to do is we're just going to coat our mushrooms. I'll just use this spoon here. We're just going to coat them lightly. So they just have this little bit of flour on them. I'm actually going to put just a little touch more. So it's kind of like a dusting that we're going to do. So we're going to put that on. And we're going to kind of let that go on. We've got our parsnips and our celery. Like I said, we need this to go for another, another little bit here yet before we add in our mushrooms. So we don't want to add everything all at once. One thing we are going to take is we do have some fresh thyme. We're going to add in some fresh thyme. And we're going to add this actually twice because what we're doing is we're going to add it so it's flavoring our parsnips and celery. And then we're going to add it again as it's flavoring our mushroom sauce. So kind of get this in here. This doesn't want to, it's a little damp, so it's not wanting to come off the sprigs. But we're good. And then I also have a little bit of fresh oregano as well. You know, I can't do anything without putting oregano in something. It's just... I guess it just has to be right. So we'll do that. But back to traveling with your dog. Uh, one of the things that we do here at Training Canines is we work with the puppies in order to get them so they're not car sick. Because that is one thing that is very, very hard. And we do that with our actual, with our water aqua conditioning. We put them on the surfboard or the boogie board. But there's still times, which we did this litter, we got a little boy on Kepler who just can't get past going in the nervousness of going into the car. So what do you do? How do you get that dog used to it? Well, what we do as puppies, and you can do with a, an older dog if you have, you need to start traveling with that dog as much as possible. It's very, very short distances. Like with Kepler, we'll put him in the van, we'll drive around the neighborhood, we'll just come back and boom, good job. We associate it with good. We put a bone in the crate with him, um, put a little bit of peanut butter, almond butter, something like that in it. So he's able to get it. He's able to realize, hey, this isn't a big deal. This is very easy to do. So if you have a dog that's that way, you want to kind of build up with them. We, you know, we chose to do this episode of this early because it's right, right at the end of October, first part of November here. So you have enough couple weeks in order to be able to work with your dog. You know, get them used to the car. Take them in, take them out. Hey, that's great. You did a good job. Set up a little home in the back for them. You can, you know, we don't use the crates when people leave here because we don't want them to associate the crate uh, with leaving and a, a, a bad thing because they're kind of nervous of that. But if your dog obviously has been with you for a while, you know, they're used to you. They know that, you know, going in the car isn't going to be a big deal. So go ahead and put that crate in the back. Set it up, you know, maybe if you can leave it, you know, your trunk down. But remember, you're traveling, so you've got luggage. So give your dog enough space, enough space to turn around, to be comfortable, you know, just to be able to, to, be able to feel safe. That's really, really the biggest thing. We want the puppy, the dog, I should say, to be able to feel safe. We're going to give this just another second here. So we've got in our parsnip, we've got in our celery, we're gonna put in our mushrooms. We're gonna let those saute a little bit. And then what we're gonna do, as I said, is we're gonna add a little bit of chicken broth. So while we do that, why don't you go ahead and take a break and we'll come back and you can, we'll have our sauce going and then we're gonna get ready and get going on our green beans. We'll see you in a minute. Hey guys, welcome back. We have our mushrooms in. And you can see our sauce is just thickening a little bit. We added a little bit of 
the probably about half a cup or so of the low sodium chicken broth. You can use veggie broth, you can use you know the chicken broth, but make sure whatever you do, use low sodium because like I said, we're flavoring. Now what we have is we have about four ounces of Newfoddle cheese, which Newfoddle cheese is just like cream cheese, a little less fat, a little bit better for us. And what we're going to do is we're gonna add it into here to thicken up our sauce and give our sauce a little bit more flavor. One thing that you wanna make sure when you do this is do not put this in when this is cold and this is hot, it will curdle. So we're gonna slowly just kind of stir this in a little bit. What you'd wanna do is you wanna kind of do it globby. So you kind of put it out because you want it to go around. You don't want to put one big hunk in or else you're gonna get it all over the place. Come on, here we go. And we're gonna get that right in there. Like I said, I think it's about about three or four ounces. And we're just gonna give this a stir and we're just gonna keep on stirring until we can incorporate it in. And if you see that your sauce gets a little bit too thick, you can add a little bit more broth, but don't add the broth until you've got the cheese just about all the way melted because you don't want to alter the temperature in here right now. But look what the creamy sauce does that make. Doesn't that look like the cream of mushroom soup? Guess what? Look how healthy ours is as opposed to that processed little can. We had our mirepoix, so to speak, but we know we can't use onions, so that's why we use parsnips. And we could have put carrots, but I didn't want orange in our green bean casserole because it just doesn't look right. But you can see how we're all kind of melting right down. Very good. And I probably will add just a little bit, I think, just a little bit more of the broth. I'm gonna let this go for a second because it's still coated on my spoon. But this just adds a ton of flavor. Once again, we didn't add any, any salt at all. I am gonna, I'm debating about the garlic powder. I just have to add garlic to everything. But I think what we'll do today is we'll just keep it this way because if you need garlic powder or you need salt, you can add it after. And this way everybody can have what they have, but we're putting some Parmesan cheese as well. So that'll give us our salt. So we're gonna turn this down. We're gonna let this sit for a second. I'm gonna add just a touch more. Wipe my hands here real quick. Just a little touch more. Just because I know by the time I mix that up, it's gonna sit here and thicken again on me. But that was an easy way just to thicken it was to use our mushrooms coated in the flour, and then we had our cream cheese as well. So we now have a nice, smooth sauce that smells wonderful. All right, we will put this down here. Next is our green beans. What I always find with the green beans, obviously that we use fresh, for me, I like to cook them the day before. So this is another easy prep that you can do. Heck, you can cook them two days before if you have to. Uh, you can make up this casserole two days before, as, as early as that, let it sit in the refrigerator, and then you just put it in the oven when you're ready for it. So this way, it gives you time to do everything else. But the main reason I like to do the green beans ahead of time is because they're always so filled with water and moisture. So what that's gonna do then, in turn, is water down our sauce, and that's something that we don't want to. So that's why we separate this out. And we also coat this, we're gonna coat this with some Parmesan cheese. So I've steamed my beans. I've actually, they were you know, obviously full beans, so I've cut them in smaller bite-sized pieces. Once again, for the dogs, cutting the cell membrane. So we're just gonna to toss that in our bowl. And then we are going to take, oh, I think it was about three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese. And we're just gonna put that in there. And we are just gonna kind of stir all that up. Because what we're doing is we're coating our green beans with the Parmesan cheese. So that's all gonna to stick to that. So that's gonna help pull out that moisture again for us. So we're not gonna get this watered down mushroom casserole that's just kind of like, ugh. right? Right, Cosmos? And we even made Cosmos some chicken today too. So this way he can just have some green beans and chicken for lunch. I guess he's a little spoiled. But you could always make this and put chicken in it. You know, you could put, think how, that would, hey, that's a new dish. We could put chicken in it and then you could even put some pasta in it. So you've made your mushroom cream sauce with some green beans, some chicken, and if you want some pasta or make it rice. You can make whatever kind of casserole. Casseroles can be anything. All right, so we've got that all together. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sauce again, turn our thing off here. And we are going to dump our sauce all right in top of our mushrooms. 
or mushrooms on top of our green beans. I'm looking at the mushrooms saying mushrooms. Get that all in there. All right, set our pan aside. We're gonna give this a quick stir up. Once again, fold in over in. And we don't have any soupy mess. You can tell that bothers me, right? I've said about 500 times. <laughs> Just drives me crazy. But we all have our quirks. You can do this with cheddar cheese. You can do this with white cheddar cheese. You can do this with gear. You wear, I can't even say it right. You know what I mean. Cheese. There's all kinds of you can substitute for this. Um, you know, we chose the ones that are lower in fat, ones that have a lot of flavor. Uh, like I said, that parm cheese, pecorino romero, uh, romano has a lot of cheese or uh, flavor. We are going to just spray our pan lightly um, because we don't want anything kind of sticking on there. I'm going to put that down. Easy enough. We're going to take our green beans and our green beans we used uh, was about 24 ounces prior to being cooked and that is enough here as you can see to fill up this eight by I think this pan is eight and a half by eight and a half. We used a full package of shiitake mushrooms which I believe were 16 ounces. We'll have all this on our recipe so don't worry about that. But there is our green bean casserole that way. Easy enough and now we are going to Top it with some sliced almonds that we know is wonderful for dogs as well. And us. We'll just put a little bit on top so we can get all toasty. And we're going to pop it into the oven at 350 degrees. We'll let it go for uh, about 30 minutes or so. Just This isn't one of those things that has to go for a certain amount of time. But you do want to let it stand a little bit when you bring it out. So just time it with your oven. It, you know, it's one of those things where it can go in last minute. You can put it in, take it back out, pop it back in right before it's time to eat, and heat it back up for the last second. Put some tin foil over the top to keep it warm. Hey, where are you going? He thinks we're done. He says he knows he's not going to eat this turn. So we're going to let this cook, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back guys. Well, we got everything all ready. We made up our bowls. What we did was we put some chicken in the bottom and then we put our green bean casserole on top. So this way Cosmos could have a full lunch and so could we. But just a couple quick things, reminders again with your traveling. When you go to stop to go to the restroom and take your dog to go to the bathroom, try to avoid the rest areas, especially for younger puppies or dogs that aren't protected and senior dogs as well. Because a lot of times people take their dogs to those areas that don't get their shots and that's where a lot of things or sicknesses can come from and giardia and coccidia and all those kinds of things that you don't want to have to go visit somebody with the holidays and then find out your dog's got the poops. So that's not fun to do. So try for those areas, maybe, you know, the Lowe's, Home Depot parking lots, you know, where you can find little patches of grass where there really isn't going to be a lot of traveling dogs going, whatever's close to the, you know, business parks, those types of things. Look for that. Also remember when you take your dog to your destination um, and you're in someone else's home with your dog, it's all new to them. They're afraid. They don't know. You know, they're looking for you to be their advocate, you know, while you're all excited to see all your relatives and happy, your dog's looking at you like, okay, where am I? What's going on? So remember to give them a little bit of quiet time, a little special time and, and some reassurance. Don't coddle them because we, we want to build their confidence and coddling is the worst way to do that. But sit there and tell them and, and we always tell people don't say, it's okay, it's okay. Because when you tell a dog it's okay, what you're actually doing is reaffirming the nervous feeling that they have in their belly. It's kind of like when we get butterflies in our stomach and if somebody says, oh, that's okay, we think, oh, I guess we're supposed to feel that way. So remember, play it safe, be safe with your dog in your travels. Also, one more thing, if you're going traveling in the colder states, a cold car is just as bad as a hot car. So be careful, um, be weary of where you're leaving your dog, what you're doing and all that kind of stuff. It's great to have them with us, but it's an extra traveler and it's just like bringing a child. We've got to make sure all their bases are covered. So for now, we're going to let Cosmos try our green bean casserole. And don't forget, you can get the recipe at empoweredpups.com and we will see you next week. And we'll make another side dish and we'll go all the way until we make the turkey. 
which Cosmos will like. Right? Here you go, bud. There's your green bean casserole and your chicken. What do you think? I guess we got a hit. Thanks, guys, for watching. You ate it all. I didn't even get halfway through mine, and you got yours all gone. You want more? <laughs> You're <a bum. laughs>